All right, so here's the axle. And at first I thought this was where the uh, bearing race would sit, but it's actually, that's not the bearing race where it sits. It actually, it's actually right here. So I measured the bearing race in here. The ID, it was 25 millimeters. So this right here is 25 millimeters. This over here is 30 millimeters. So um, yeah, so here I'm all trying to force it onto this piece of here. Like, what, what the hell doesn't go on? I'm gonna back off on my uh, my pressure, but you know, it sits, sits, sits right in. So, you screw on the castle nut too tight. The wheel's not even spinning. I'm trying to spin the wheel, it doesn't want to spin. It's way too tight. Oh, that's really tight. So, that's spinning, but I still feel resistance. That's still too tight. Still feel resistance. So that feels pretty good right there. I'm gonna, I wanna put, I wanna um, push it side to side. If I can feel any uh, any type of any type of uh, looseness. So I'm gonna try a little bit more. I'm gonna look for the hole for the. Um, for the cuddle pin. Let's see, where's it at? It should be, it should be this way. I don't see it at all. Hmm, where's that hole at? Where's that hole? It's clogged up somewhere and I just can't tell. Nope. Don't feel nothing, don't feel nothing. Oh, I see it. It's actually right here like that. Okay, so. So now it's spinning. So I could get it to the next slot on the cuddle pin, if it's that too loose or not. See the color pin right there, right? Yep, there it is right there. So sorry. Side to side feels. Side to side feels okay. I don't. I don't feel any slack. That feels good. So that means I need to loosen up the cuddle or the nut a little bit more. So now the color pin is still not. Uh, Still not exposed.
this way potentially could work as well. But I'm, I'm gonna do it this way with the other knot. Uh, let's get this one up. Oh, jeez. The screwdriver is not very strong. That, this one up, over. You have a little hammer or something like that, and just kind of whack it. Whack it down a little bit, just whack it. Okay, I'm using a butt of the wrench, which is not the proper use, but the hell with it. I should have whacked the, the uh, small one first, then the big one. Let's see if I could still do that. So, I'll open it so. That's it. So let's stop moving. The wheel is spinning freely. Minimum drag. Whatever drag I feel. Actually, I don't really feel any drag. I just feel the friction of the grease. The grease will, will be kind of sticky. And put the cap back on. Like so. Oops. Let me get my little mat up here. When you whack this in, make sure that uh, the gap all along around it's nice and even. If you if you do it where one side is in more than the other, it tends to um, distort the cap a little bit. So you kind of can I go around it, keeping it nice and even. Okay, that's it. It's all in. Yep, it's all in. I'm actually using a dead blow mallet. You actually, I'm not sure if you guys can hear it. That's it. Spins freely. There's only drag is from only from the grease. I can feel the grease stickiness. Side to side, there's no play, and that's how you put the wheel on. So I started running the wires. So this is how the trailer came with the hole here. So I, I'm assuming you use, you use the hole to run the wires through. There's, there's a hole for the uh, uh, the light up front. Light up front. And you can have to uh, mount the uh, light back right here. And the wire will come through here to, the, to this light. But what I did, and you can actually see it on this side over here. Got a little, uh, this is actually not a grommet. Originally I was gonna get a grommet, but when I measured these holes, 
I measured these holes and they were actually, uh, they're metric, you know, because it's made in China, so it's metric. So this hole right here was 14 millimeters and this hole over here was 20 millimeters. So what I did, and I went to the hardware store and you know, I was looking for, uh, and, but they didn't have any metric grommets. So they have in, uh, inch grommets, but the problem with the inch grommet is most of them, most most grommets, if you look at the wall thickness here, see how, that, how thick that is? Most of the uh, uh, grommets that they have, the the thickness here is meant for uh, 1 16th of an inch. So that basically means, uh, um, that basically means uh, uh, the 1 16th, it's a little bit thinner than this when it's thinner. This is, uh, let me see what is, what size is this? This is maybe 3 30 seconds in thickness. So, you know, so the, this, the grommet doesn't quite fit or, you know, or at least not properly. You have to kind of force it in because of that thickness. So what I got instead is I got this little, and I, I actually, at the hardware store, these were in the, in the little drawer uh, near near the where, the where they sell the grommets, the drawers of grommets. You know, they have pre-packaged grommets and they have drawers of, you know, individual grommets. So, so, so I found these and these are actually in inches. Uh, now I can't remember what what how many inches these were. I believe I believe these bigger ones were three quarters of an inch. So three quarters of an inch is just under uh, twenty millimeters, and I think this one was nine sixteenth. Uh, so nine sixteenth is uh, I think it's just above fourteen millimeters. So I think they also have half inch, but half inch uh, is a little bit smaller. Uh, so anyways. So I actually pushed this one in, the 916th one, and it, and it was like a perfect fit. So, so it's good there. But over here, actually let me see if I can push in the, uh, one of these ones. Actually, I'm gonna thread it through the wire here real quick. Actually, I'm gonna, the reason why I, I'm, not, I'm not gonna put this one in yet compared to the other one is because uh, I need to do, you know, I need to cut this wire and, and spice it into for the light. So you see this, you see this one, there's a little bit of you know, wiggle room. Whereas the other one, the other smaller one didn't have any wiggle room. It was literally a, like, you know, uh, right in, it was, it was like a perfect fit. So this one has a little bit of wiggle room, but it still fits though. Cause these, these little uh, inserts here, they have a, they have these little things here that, that will actually kind of clip, that will click onto the, um, you know, onto the, the hole and, and, and then keep it in place. So that's what I'm gonna use. Uh, all right. All right, so these are some of the tools I, that I use. I use a, a, I have a 19 millimeter, a 16 millimeter uh, box, 17 millimeter box, 16 or 17 millimeter box. Uh, let's see, 19 millimeter socket. And also 16 and 17 millimeter sockets as well. Uh, a couple of long screwdrivers just kind of help me push or grab the wires back. You don't, yeah, you probably don't need these ones. Also got some mallets, and I don't think you need the mallets either, but I don't really need the mallets or the screwdrivers. Uh, obviously, a wire stripper and wire crimper, and I got this crimper right here. This is a waterproof crimper. Because uh, you know this trailer is going to be a boat trailer, so this is what they give you. You know, they give you. I hate these. I hate these type of things. These these things are horrible. Don't don't you know, don't use these things. These are things. The vibration. These are the tapping. Uh, these type of. Uh, uh, these type of. Uh, of uh, um, wire splicers. These these tap into your wire. Let me show you what this is. This is horrible. Don't ever use these things. These things are like, these, these will give you problems in the long term. So basically what they do, so I can open this up. So anyways, what they do, if you look at it, you this, you see how there's two holes right there. What you do is you put the, um, you put one wire through, right? One wire through and you put the other wire that you want to connect. You know, basically you have two, two separate wires that you want to connect, right? So you one wire to one hole, and the other wire to the other hole, then you squeeze this down, and this in inside, inside there, and you can, you can kind of see the metal inside there. Inside there, it, it will actually cut through the insulation, 
it cut through the insulation and uh, um and the and the, the metal this metal will actually touch those two wires and bridging the wires so basically connecting them the problem with this type of ins of uh, tap spice is that over time the vibration especially on a vehicle the vibration uh where where those where the the metal inside you know the ins inside here that cut through the uh insulation it will also over time from the vibration it will actually cut your wires as well so so also from there after a while the wire gets you know from the vibration it, it gets cut and also it gets it gets severed so so don't ever use these type of things you know this is no good and these wire nuts you know this is okay for for like home use and stuff but don't use it for like a uh for like a uh, uh you know for a vehicle um potentially you know again the vibration but also this trailer is meant for uh you know this is you know it's a it's a it's a trailer for a, a watercraft right so when you back up into the you know down into the boat ramp and stuff you know these things are not waterproof you don't want to use that you don't want your wire to corrode right so so this is a horrible you know horrible horrible uh uh little wire thing that they give you really cheap so that's why I got I got the wire waterproof bullet connectors. So this bullet connectors, you uh, after you crimp them down, you get a heat gun or you, you even use a lighter to heat it up a little bit, and the the plastic will actually shrink and it will form a uh, uh, hopefully a waterproof seal if you, if you did it right. So, that's, so I got that instead. Other thing I also got was uh, some washers. So 10 millimeter washers. Uh, I had a choice between getting stainless or uh, and I'm not sure what type of stainless this is. But stainless and and, and uh, galvanized, you know, basically zinc coated. Uh, I think maybe in in retrospect I should have got the galvanized one instead of the stainless. <clears throat> but the reason why I, I got this was actually because <laughs> surprisingly the stainless was cheaper than the galvanized, you know, the zinc coated one. Normally the galvanized zinc coated is usually more expensive than or excuse me more, uh, cheaper than stainless. Uh, but I don't not sure I'm not sure why in a in a packet of one hundred uh, the stainless one was was cheaper by like a was it i think 50 cents or a dollar or something like that but my ass was cheap about it i'm like oh stainless but so, but now the reason why i, I think maybe i should have gotten the zinc one because because again this is a, a water uh you know this is for going down into water for yeah i mean it's only for two minutes to to you know load and unload the boat but uh what zinc helps uh when you put into the salt water environment what the, what the zinc does it actually it acts like the zinc itself will act, act like an anode a sacrificial anode just like on a on a boat of on a boat or on a on a boat motor you have a sacrificial anode and that's what the zinc would have done so the stainless won't do that uh so i'm so i think in retrospect i should, should have got the zinc one because uh, really on this on this um uh, trailer there's there's nothing on here that's uh that's zinc well, maybe potentially the boats that they come with is zinc coated. Maybe I'm not sure. I guess they are, but you know, in, in you know, in my, um, I guess in the, I think they are, but who knows? But also the the other bad thing about the zinc coating is that you know they're very thin, so they don't, they don't last very long. So that's the reason why I actually bought this uh, this anode right here, and this one's actually an aluminum. I'm not sure if, if I should have gotten an aluminum or zinc or what, but uh, but I got an aluminum one. Um, I think the, you know, there is a difference between salt water and fresh water. I'm gonna mainly use this for salt water. Uh, every once in a while, maybe fresh water too, but mostly for, for uh, salt water. Uh, so, so aluminum works for salt water. Uh, I think if you use fresh water, I think it, uh, it's better to have a, um, it's better to have to use zinc or maybe even um, maybe a magnesium. I can't remember if this is magnesium anode or not. I know there is for hot water tanks, but uh, but for uh, for salt water and fresh water environment I think it's usually uh, uh, slightly different but anyways I have the the you know aluminum one so I'm gonna find some place to mount this um, I think that's, that's all you need for putting on the the trailer or those are the oh, what I, I got what the tools I use and then extra um, extra parts the other thing you also want to do when you once you put the trailer together and everything is check the torque on the uh, uh, on the lug nuts here so this is a four four by uh, 100 meaning four lug you know it's obviously it's four lug but the spacing between the, the lugs right here is uh, 100 millimeters so basically it's like a small car you know like a like an old 
not not the newer Honda Civics. I think the newer Honda Civics might be a five level, but, but anyways, like the older Honda Civics and such, you know, like from the nineties, they have the same bolt pattern. And on those cars, uh, the lug, the uh, the torque spec on those, or if I can remember correctly, it's eighty foot pounds. So that's what I recommend for this as well, eighty foot pounds. Uh, yeah, that's it. So that's your little preview. And uh, you know, obviously, I already got the tra trailer mostly together. I still need to run the wires and connect the lights and stuff. But uh, but uh, you know, I do that in a in a sep separate cut from this one. So let's look at the wiring harness real quick. So I prepared the wiring harness. So you know, here it is, and it comes with uh, it comes with uh, both ends here. You probably don't need this end. Let's pull this out right here. So that looks familiar, right? It's the pull plug. So I don't think you need this end because this, you know, you have this end on your on your vehicle. But they made it. They made it so that way you can actually tap into tap into your vehicle. If you don't have, you know, if you don't have the, uh, if you don't have the uh, a wiring harness on your vehicle, so you could use this to tap into your vehicle. But I, I have a wiring harness already in place for my vehicle, so I'm not gonna use that. So my vehicle will plug right into this. So you see the, the all the cables. So so the white on on this wiring harness, the white is the ground. So this is what you uh, basically you clamp onto. Uh, you know, you ground onto your like the trailer. Or the or the car, you know, the white is gonna be grounded. So there's two uh, two sides here. The side with the yellow is the driver side, and the side with the green is the passenger side. And you see that the both sides has brown. The brown is gonna be the. Um, I think that's gonna be the. Uh, the. Uh, the running lights. The brown is the running lights on both sides. So the running light stays on no matter what, right? So the yellow one is the is the signal. Um, excuse me, not the signal. The uh, the brakes, the brakes, or the brakes and or the uh, the signal. So it's both, because in the U.S., the U.S. It's, it's it's a little bit different from uh from other countries where, well, our our tail lights. When you look at the tail lights, you got the two sides. So you got a left side and you got a right side. Well, let me actually let's, let's use this. Let's, Let's use this as example here. So you say that let's say this is the left side, left side tail light. And this is your right, your right side tail light, right? So in the U.S., how it, how the lights are run is that the running lights is always you know once once you turn on your lights, the running lights will always be on, right? Then you have a uh, uh, then you have a tail uh, a brake light and a t turn signal light. So in the U.S., the brake light is also the turn signal light. So let's say, for example, if you start flashing the turn signal, the turn signal will flash. But but also when you hit the brakes, that that same flash, that light that was flashing as a turn signal will, will always be will also be the brake light as well. So it, it'll stay on. Uh, so so that's basically that's how it works in the U.S. It's kind of oddball. You know, the countries they don't do that. They separate the turn signal from the uh, from the brake lights. Uh, or was that the running lights? I forget which one. Anyways, I'm. It's one of those. I or maybe it's the uh, the uh, turn signals and the uh, running lights. That's the same. Anyways, one of those two. You know, one of those two is the same. I forget which one is which. But but in other countries, like you know, if you buy Japanese cars, uh, for example, or even European cars, the running lights, the turn signal, and the uh, uh, brake light, they're all. All of them are all separate and they all have their own separate lights. But the US, uh, two of those lights are shared. So it's kind of goofy. But that's just the way it's been for a long time and they never actually changed it. So, all right, so we got the uh, wire here and how I ran it. How I ran it here was actually, you know, obviously I ran it up into the tube, right? But I, what I did was, because this one has two bolts here, right? Two bolts. I ran the wire so that way they are above the bolts. 
right? So the, the reason why I did that was because I wanted to be I want them to be out of the way of the chain because if you went underneath the chain, you know, because the, the weight of the chain needs to sit down and over time the chain could you know could uh, could rub rub the uh, wires uh, here bare, right? So so I want to do that. Uh, other thing you should also do that that would be a good idea is maybe uh, get some you know uh, electrical tape or something like that and wrap this up, you know, where where there could be like a the uh, uh, rub, rubbing rubbing locations so which is you know right around here and you know do this where the uh where the bolts are too so in that area right there you know that's what is it like six inches or whatever it is this 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 length right here so that's a good idea to do that uh actually i think i should do that too man i already i already ran some of my wires through already but you know i might um, I, sh I should pull them out I should pull the wires out and, and do that Actually, instead of running uh, electrical tape, well, actually, if you run electrical tape, you don't need to do that. You can just pull it out, you know, about a foot and, and wrap it around, so that's easy. But what I'm going to do instead is I'm actually going to use, um, I'm actually going to use uh, heat shrink, heat shrink tubing. So if I do that, I actually have to pull this, the, the wires back out. So I, yeah, I'm going to do that because I have heat shrink tubing. So I'm going to heat shrink tube these, uh, these wires. Uh, I think that, that will, will work better than electrical tape. Um, same with right here too. This area right here, uh, and this you know the bolts is gonna rub potentially rub against the bolts uh, down in here. So obviously I have a little grommet insert here that that will help protect uh, the wires. But I'm gonna you know heat shrink this this section as well, uh, uh, and I, and again over here as well. And you know wherever I think there's gonna be rubbing and stuff, I will I will heat shrink. Um, but actually, over here it's not so critical. Even here it's not that critical because because the bolts is going up and down, and the wires most likely will just kind of sit down or slightly rub. But over here it's different because the wire is sitting on top of this, and these are single point. You know, it's a very narrow point, so over time it rubs right here. Potentially that could rub more than say here, where it's sitting on the whole flat piece and it's rubbing on the whole flat pieces. You know, it's not gonna be uh, so. It's not going to be all that important, or not 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 that uh, not that of a concern. Even against right here, it might not be that much of a concern either. But uh, but I might do it anyways. Um, okay. So uh, let's look at all, all right wiring. So 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 I have the uh, left side here. So I have the left side here. Uh, again, the left side is the yellow side. So how I'm gonna connect this is, uh, you, know, you have to run it through the, the side side lights first. So this is where that first hole is. This is where the first hole is, right? You know, right here. So you have to do this. You have to connect. So the, remember, the white is, is ground, so you always ground it down. So where where these two holes get the uh, bolt down. That's where I'm gonna ground it. All right. This this is a brown wire, so this brown wire has to tap into the brown wire on here. And I'm gonna use these the heat shrink tubing to do that. So I'm gonna cut. I'm gonna cut. You know, I'm gonna separate this this uh, wire apart right here, and I'm gonna cut into the brown wire and splice into the, this into it and crimp it down with the heat shrink uh, butt connectors. Uh, same thing with the. Uh, uh, with the tail light, so the tail light has three wires. Uh, obviously, yellow, yellow to yellow, uh, brown to brown. So actually, what, by the time you get to the to the to the uh, tail light, you don't have to worry about splicing because you're at the end of the, the line. So you're just uh, connecting right here at the end of the line. So what yellow to yellow, brown to brown, and and white is to the uh, is the ground. So so white, I'm gonna basically I'm gonna put it right on on the. Uh, the bolt, you know, loop it up into that bolt right there, and that's how you do it. Um, it's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Um, and again, I'm using uh, waterproof heat shrink uh, butt connectors. So once you crimp these down, then you put a, a, a lighter on it or a, or a heat gun, you know, a blow dryer. Uh, the, the plastic will shrink down and and, uh, and form a hopefully a watertight seal. Because this is what you know. That's what it's made for. 
So yeah, let's get started on that. So here's the wire coming out from the side, uh, the side uh, for the light. Where's my light? Where it is? So it's the side light right here, right? So there's the two mounting holes, and uh, I basically I thread it through, and I basically space it out. You know, basically like from my tip of my pinky to tip of my uh, thumb right here. So this is where I'm gonna cut. The reason why I'm leaving this much space here is that. Cause this is gonna you know this is a watercraft trailer it's gonna be in salt water uh in time the connection that i'm gonna do here is probably it's gonna get you know salt water in it and it's gonna corrode and it's gonna mess up the connection so so i'm leaving this extra space so that way i could cut it back and reconnect it in the future so that's you know that, i think that's enough I could, I could do it several times by the time that i do it like i don't know three times or whatever this trailer will probably be rusted out you know because it's gonna be in uh salt water so um so yeah so i think that's enough right there uh so i split the the wire apart uh let's see i'm probably gonna split it a little bit further than that i think i know that i think that's fine that should be okay uh so split it apart we're cutting the brown because that's, that's the side we're gonna we're gonna uh tap into splice into cut the brown Obviously, you gotta strip it down. So let's see what wire gauge this is. This looks like a, uh, it looks like an 18 gauge. Yeah, it looks like an 18 gauge. Maybe a 16. Let me try a 16 first to be on the safe side. So strip it down about a quarter inch or so. So you when I use the strippers, I I will crimp. You know, I will, I will cut it. Then I will turn the wire 90 degrees. And cut it again. Uh, so it came off. It came off with yeah. So so yeah. I was right. I think it was a 16, 16 gauge. Um, yeah. So I'll say about a quarter inch. Twist it up, right? Do the same thing with the other side. So sixteen gauge. There, turn it about 90 degrees, snip again, then pull it out. So yeah, so it's definitely 16 gauge for sure. Just uh, actually, that's actually a surprise. I was wasn't expecting it to be 16. I was gonna, I was thinking it might be a, a um, a 10 or excuse me, not a 10, a, a, a 18 or something like that. So here's this one's already stripped, but God, this like. That's like only eight evidence, that's not that's not enough. I need to strip this this light one too as well. This light one right here. So I think this one's also 16 gauge as well. So you know, so get my quarter inch of space. Oh this one doesn't feel like 16 gauge. Yeah, I'm cutting it on the 16 side, but it's not it's not cutting. So that means it's a little bit small, a little smaller. So 18 gauge side. One of the things I do to prevent the strands from getting cut or nick, uh, I will go back to, uh, once I cut the uh, insulator. I will go back to the bigger one, the big, next bigger size. Then I will then I will pull the insulator off from there. And that will prevent the uh, the wires from uh, the strands from getting getting severed. So that's that. Push that up. So it's a matter of which side do I want to connect it on. I think I'm going to connect it so that way it points. Um, so that way the let's see. So this this end here is coming from the front, right? So I'm gonna make it so that way both is coming from the front side. So this end will be like this. So later on when I stick it in, the back end will be the smaller the the one wire side and the yeah actually I, I can see it from here that this this one is thinner than this one. So anyway, so this is an 18 gauge and this is a 16 gauge. So anyways, I'm gonna connect it so that way uh, the from the back is one wire and from the front is two wires 
And the reason why I'm doing that is because my, uh, you know, because I'm, I'm trailing this on the car and the car, when it hitches, is actually, and I, I have the extension higher up. So right now I'm pretty much, the hitch is pretty much leveled. And, but I won't be able to keep the hitch, the, you know, the trailer level. It's going to be, uh, I have the, the tallest uh, height raised bar hitch I could find, which is uh, five inches, you know, for, for my size. Uh, uh, but it's still, it's still lower than, than, than where the ball mounts. So, so the front end will actually kind of tilt down a little bit. So because of that, uh, potential water will be, uh, running down, you know, once I bring it up from the ramp. But actually when you're on the ramp, it might, the ramp might be steep enough where it's actually going to be pointing down, but who knows? Uh, but anyways, I'm going to do it this way. So that way if water runs, runs forward. On the smaller side, if, if there's the uh, uh, connector, hopefully it's that's less likely for water to run into it versus the bigger side. Hmm. Actually, it might. I'm thinking because the ramps are usually pretty steep, steep enough where I think this thing will be angled down. So that that means the water would be running this this direction. But I don't. I'm not sure if this is gonna be low enough in the water. I'm not sure. If, yeah, I'm not sure if this is gonna be actually in the water here or not. It might be. Around this area right here will right be near the water line, possibly underneath or right above the water. Uh, not completely sure. Um, so, so if, if the water flows towards the back, when I you know because of the angle of the ramp, I would want it to be this way. So less likely for water to flow into it. But you know if it submerged, it is. You know what? It doesn't really matter. If it submerged, it submerged. It's like uh, it's like you know. It don't matter. All right, so heat shrink tubing, or not tubing, uh, butt connectors. Right, heat shrink butt connectors for the proper size. So that way I don't, I don't have to heat shrink, uh, not tubing, but uh, butt connectors. Yeah, that's why I said butt connectors. So that, that way I don't have to use heat shrink tubing here. So I think this is the proper size. Oh shoot, this is, they might be kind of small. Let's see, this butt connector is meant for Oh shoot, it's meant for 22 to 18 gauge. So I think this one is already 16 gauge. This one's already 16 gauge, huh? Actually, you know what? It's not 16 gauge. This is actually 18 gauge. Yeah, it's 18 gauge. No, so I take it back. This is 18 gauge. It's just the insulator is so thick that it looks like it, I thought it was 18 gauge. And that means this one's even thinner. This one is probably a 20 gauge. Then. So 18, 20, yep, it's 20 gauge. Yep. So that's an 18 and that's a 20. So this, this is so these butt connectors are meant for 18 gauge, in which it fits. But once I, once I uh, twist in the, uh, twist in the um, the 20 gauge, it's gonna be thicker. Uh, I'm not sure if I can stick it in anymore. Let me try and see if it works. If it doesn't, I have to get a thicker butt connectors. Dang it! I wasn't expecting to do that. Like so, so usually the, the stuff that you have to twist, I would cut a little bit longer than quarter inch, because when you twist it, you actually lose some, uh, you actually lose some uh, some length. So a little bit longer than quarter inch. Oh shoot it! Oh man, it barely. Shoot! What's happening is what's not connecting is the, uh, the the sheathing on the outside is not actually fitting. Dang it! That didn't fit. The insulator is too thick. Shoot. Okay, I'm gonna have to go back to the hardware store and get a thicker, a thicker one. Damn it! I wasn't hoping I wouldn't have to do that. I had a feeling I should have gotten two. And so I can actually squeeze this together here. So let me get a little flatter. Let me get flatter so that way it could go into the. Uh, into the, uh, the insulated side. Let's see. So here yeah, I'm twisting this too. Cause I want to keep it twisted with the, uh, dang it, I didn't do it far enough. So, put this in here. Uh, a little bit further, maybe three. Three even squeezing the uh, 
squeezing this kind of flat so I can fit it again to the to the heat shrink section of it. Let's see. Oh man, it's not fitting. Dang it, nope, it's not fitting. Nope, I have to get the bigger ones. Okay, this doesn't work. All right, so I'm gonna have to get uh, some bigger ones in. Damn it. I have to go back to the store and waste more time. Shoot. See, that's why I didn't want to do, waste more time. Anyways, in the meantime, let me, uh, let me just cut up all the other sides too. And, uh, and I'll get back to this. All right, so I finally went and got the proper size butt connectors, so 16 to 14. So, so remember that because I, I'm using two wires in one spot, uh, the the uh, 18 gauge one didn't, doesn't fit the two wires, even though these wires are you know 18 gauge, but when you when you twist them together, it's, they're thicker now. So there's your connection right there. And on this end, I think I mentioned this earlier. Uh, I'm going to be using this right here as the ground, um, this way, for this little hole right here. And when I screw this in with the, uh, self-tapping, self-tapping screw that, that comes in the, in the kit. Um, so that's gonna, that's what's gonna do that. And, uh. That should work. And, you know, obviously, you gotta feed the cables too, or gotta feed the cables back in. And remember, I left, you know, I left this extra length of here. I'm gonna do the same. So I left the extra length on the forward, the forward cable. I'm gonna do the same amount on the on the aft, uh, uh, on the aft uh, section of it as well. So remember, I do that because over time, this will probably, you know, end up getting corroded. Salt water will probably end up getting in here. Uh, I think uh, to do this side, to the side where there's two wires, because there's no way you could seal that that side. This, this, I think this side is sealed, but this other si the side where the two wires are, are not. I could, you know, I could in the future when it when it gets corroded, I could cut this off and re, you know, re, you know, cut this section right here off and redo this. So that's why I left all this extra wire, you know, about I don't know, at least six inches of wire, um, at least this much right here, right? At least this much. So that's what that's like four or five inches. Uh, so you cut it down. Uh, yeah, so I guess I need to feed the wire back to the back then, and uh, button this up. Screw these in. Well, actually, before I screw it in, I need to put that that little grommet. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it's gonna fit here or not, because I'm gonna. I'm gonna see. I'm gonna set it this way, right here, like like this. And you see that uh, this right here, there's, there's a little recessed. That's actually not flush with the uh, with the with the edge right here. See how it's recessed right there? So I, I hope that's that's uh, over, that recess part is over this hole. So where, where the that little plug I, I put in here, it's gonna be, um, it's gonna clear it. You know, remember the little plug I have right here? It's gonna clear that. Oh shoot, I forgot to put this in. God damn it. Really? Okay, that's a mistake. I should have put this in first before I did this. Now, now I have to cut this again. God damn it. Okay, well, you know, lesson learned right there. I forgot about that. Right here. Um, shoot, there's no way I can feed this in because it's already connected. There's no way I can feed that in. Yeah, so I have to cut. I have to cut right here. Or I have to cut this section off and redo it. Dang it. Anyways, you get the point.
Okay, so I got everything in there. And uh, it looks like everything fits too. You know, as far as the, the little, uh, you know, this little uh, spacer grommet thing of Bob here, it fits underneath here. So, so the light fits flush. So now you just need to screw it in. So here's the uh, where the ground is right here, right? So this is all painted, so it won't make contact. But the screw will, when it screws in here, it will move move the paint and it's gonna go to the bare metal. That's how it's gonna make contact. So when you put this in here, see this mount here? You see one side is flush, this side is flush and this side is not. You want the flush side to be against like that. Uh, the side that's not, it's gonna be on the light side. So that way there's space right there, like so. And this wire right here, you're gonna tuck it underneath like so. So that way it's out of the way of everything so it doesn't get pinched. So it's gonna mount basically like that. And this is gonna, you know, this the rest of this is gonna go in here. And it's just barely gonna stick out and that's it. So this thing's actually not, this light's actually not waterproof. Um, it's an LED, so that's cool. I'm not sure if right here what the LED is, is waterproof or not. But from this side over here, it doesn't look like it's waterproof. So I'm not sure what's up with that. I mean, you know, this is supposed to be a, for a boat trailer, so so they should have made it waterproof. So um, actually, I think I'm gonna open this up. I want to see if there's a seal in here or not. I might end up putting some dielectric grease in here uh, to uh, prevent the you know all the corrosion and stuff. And I actually might put a little bit of dielectric grease on on this part too, where it mounts right here, so that way it prevents this from corroding as well. Okay, so I took this apart. So they basically it's been epoxied, so that should seal it. But when they when they made this, what they didn't do is they didn't wait for the epoxy to basically harden, you know, it to cure, and and they you know they epoxied it, and I think they just shoved it in there. And what happened was just while it was still soft, the wire moved on it, so I could see like gaps, you know, little gaps that like where salt water could still get in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix up some epoxy and uh, you know add some more in here so hopefully that will completely seal it so you know that's preventative uh, measures right there So I'm looking at the uh, driver's side rear light. So you see this groove right here in the uh, in the housing. So this is supposed to go over like so, and it fits like that, All right? But this top wire right here is kind of loose, and you know, I think over time potentially it could rub and, and uh, be bare. So you don't want that because you know this is a this is a positive wire. This is also a positive wire. This is the ground wire, so I'm gonna switch it so that way the, the ground wire is up on top. So if it does rub bare, you know, it's no big deal. You know, it, it won't short. Um, so I'm gonna do that by obviously opening this up um, and switch it around. Two, three, four. Uh, so here, I want the white wire to be on the top instead of the bottom. Actually, I have to pull out all the wires because of the, the ring right here, it won't fit with all the other wires there. So I have to pull out the other wires first. Pull out the other wires first before I can pull out the, uh, the white one. Okay. Actually, I didn't need to. I actually didn't need to pull out the right one. 
because the, the other two is already out. I could, you know, just all I need to do is just reposition it. So the white one needs to be on top. In this case, it's on the bottom or the closest to the to the edge. And those other two wires go through. There it goes. And that should uh I think that should solve that, that problem or potential problem I should say. So it's always uh you know I'm trying to trying to trying to be uh trying to solve whatever potential problems that could occur. So that's so I think that's one of them. So put this back, make sure you orient it properly. So there's two lights here. So this is the uh, uh, license plate light and this is the uh, turn signal light. So this thing's all epoxy. I didn't actually have to epoxy this one, the, the passenger side I did. But this one down here, I didn't have to epoxy everything sealed. Even the little LEDs are here. They, they, I could see a little drop of epoxy on each one of them too. So, so this should all be sealed as well. Um, this one as well. So that way, you know, protects it from the salt water, right? At least that's the, that's the idea anyways. I feel like they should have put a little bit more epoxy. Uh, but you know... It's made in China so you don't can't expect much from it. So that's it. All I need to do is just put everything back. That should be good. Once everything goes back, then I could, uh, you know, reattach this thing and or attach it properly on the tail. With a, you know, this is the this is the tail light. So here I got the uh, the wires connected. Remember I used the uh, waterproof heat shrink uh, butt connectors, right? This wire here, this is the ground, um, right, the ground wire. So the ground wire, you need, you know, you need to obviously connect it to the uh, the chassis here, the uh, the frame. But everything is painted, uh, and I mean I could possibly connected to where the bolt is but this is this ring is small and the bolts are bigger and also when you connect it out here like this you know this thing's going to be exposed to sea you know salt water seawater uh it's going to corrode away i think pretty fast because of how 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 thin it is so what i'm gonna do instead is i'm gonna snip this off snip this ring off i run the wire all the way to the front uh, and ground it up there and i'm gonna do I was gonna originally I was gonna just run run the two you know the ground on this side and the ground on this side connect those two together and run one wire up the front but I decided not to do that because I think that's a um, uh, that's a bad idea uh, you don't have redundancy so what what that means is that if some reason something maybe the connection or whatever with that one line uh, uh, you lose con continuity both lights will be out but if I instead of running one wire line up I will have each each wire have its own separate line running up, so that way if one one goes out, you you still have the other one. It still works, All right? So anyways, so I'm gonna run it up. <clears throat> I'm gonna run it up, and uh, this is the ground pointer here. So this they have this little hole over here. This is the only hole that I, I could find besides the hole in the you know, behind the the light right here. So I'm gonna run it out, and obviously I'm gonna run it out through there, and I'm gonna ground it right here and and obviously this right here too this is the ground so i'm gonna use this point right there too and you know when you screw this into here 
the self captain screw, you know, it's gonna pierce the paint and, and then you're gonna have metal to metal, so that's that's, that's good. And up here, it's not gonna get, you know, hopefully, it's not gonna get wet up here, at least not by the salt water, anyways. Uh, so, and I'm hoping right here where, the, where this ground point is doesn't get wet from salt water because because I, I would see that this would, you know, that screw part right there would get corroded pretty fast too. Um, and that, you know, that ground point because, you know, again, those the ground. The ground, uh, uh, the little ring, ring spade here. It's so thin, you know. It's it uh, it corrode away really fast, really easily. So that's why uh, I don't want it to get that salt water under at all. Uh, so yeah, so I'm gonna run it through, run it, run it through the holes here, and back out out to where that cable is. So uh, yeah, so that's the pan. Let's do that. So got the wire up and through. So these are my two wires that I connected for the ground, for the rear lights. Um, the kit also came with these these two um, these two uh, little ring crimper things. But this this type of crimp is different from your regular crimp. When your regular crimp is round all the way, so this one's different. So I have this tool right here. This is a crimping tool for that, where it does, you know, it does each side. See how the shape is. If you look to the shape there, it's a uh, um, right, it's a uh, one side is the bottom here is a uh, concave and the top is like an M. So that's how it goes. It goes in like this, and the top since it comes down like an M, it rolls it rolls this tip here, the two ends here. It rolls it down and curves it down. So that's uh, let me uh. Let me strip these wires real quick and show you show you what that how that is how it goes. So this is an 18 gauge. So you always strip about a quarter inch or so. Sometimes a little bit more than a quarter inch. Alright, so let's see what size this thing is. So they have different size crimping uh different size crimpers. On here, uh, let's see. Let's, let me try to see what size this one is. So I don't think it's A. A is kind of big. I think it's B. So it might even be C. There's actually two, two ends here. You see, there's two two sides so you actually have to crimp both of them so the reason why there's two is this the small one the one nearest to the ring that's for crimping the bare wire and the farther one out here that's for crimping the bare wire and the insulation so that's how that works so let's let me look at this thing i think it's a yeah i think it's a c i don't think it's a d a d is a little bit on the small side Yep, it, yeah, these two small. Okay, so I think this is a C, C size crimping. So basically, I have it like so. Where the two flange on top will curve back down. So let's, uh, let me actually stick this through and crimp it. Hopefully you guys can see it on camera. 
so right all the way through i want to make sure the insulation goes all the way through the first set so i guess i cut my i cut my wires a little bit long but that's okay so it's like so all right so that's a uh, it right there squeeze it down so you see how it's uh how each side rolls back down so that's, that's what that does that's what this crimper does that fits there so let's go to the one with the housing with the insulation i should say same thing There you go. So this is how that works. Okay. So yeah, so I guess I cut my uh, wires a little bit long. I didn't need it to be that long. So it could be slightly shorter, but that's fine. It works. Just push it to the side. No big deal. Okay, so here's the trailer. So I think it's pretty much done. Uh, got all my wires in, my uh, my ground lines in. Here's my bar hitch. I'm still waiting for uh, you know my, the the uh, the the receiver end for my uh, for the trailer. You know that attaches to it. I'm waiting for a few other parts. I got my spare tire. Got my spare tire in, but I'm still waiting for the mount for it. I'm waiting for the uh, the swivel level, whatever they call that thing, you know, with the swivel ball, and you could you know jack it up and down. Uh, I'm still waiting for that. I need to take the boat out and mount it, you know, put it on here, so that way I can adjust adjust this right here. You know, I guess I'm also waiting for the uh, the little winch to pull the boat up, right? Uh, let's see, what else am I waiting for? So it should be coming in today, sometime today. At least what, that's what Amazon says, anyways. Uh, so got my cables here. It's all any where well, I think there would be sh uh, chaffing up heat shrink. I, I think I should have heat shrink this, but you know th this is the reason why I didn't is because this is the ground, so it doesn't really matter. But the stuff that does matter with this uh, this hotline, you see, I yeah, heat, sh I heat shrunk it. So that way, it uh, helps protect it. <coughs> see the box that came in. You know how it's all see how, how it's all bashed up. So that's a result of that, from the box being completely banged up. Uh, back side is pretty much in. Maybe I should have, maybe I should have heat shrunk this, but it's too late now. Well, I guess I could, I could always cut this and redo it, but I'm kind of lazy for that. Again, I sh maybe I should have done that, but that's all right. Uh, back end's done, everything's done. Now I'm just waiting for the certificate of origin to come as well. Uh, oh, one more thing I forgot to put in. So I'm gonna put in an anode. This is an aluminum one. So aluminum is good for salt water and also um, what, what do they call it? Backwash or brick, 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 brick wash or something like that. You know, combination of salt water and fresh water. Uh, you can also use a, a zinc one, but the aluminum lasts a little bit longer. A zinc ones, you know, it's, it's basically salt water mostly. Um, you can even use it in a magnesium one, but the magnesium one, if you use magnesium for salt water, it will wear out so fast. Uh, but you know, it might not matter because it's, it's a trailer and it's not like it's getting wet very often. Uh, uh, so this way it will hopefully help reduce uh, the rusting on this trailer. Uh, so I'm, I'm basically gonna mount it right here. I think I have enough space right, right in here where, the, where these screws are, or these, uh, the back side right here. And because this is painted, you know, it needs there needs to be contact, electrical contact. So I think it's gonna touch here and here, and I, hopefully somewhere in there it it will touch the uh, the ground too. But I'm not too sure. 
if not i might have to kind of you know sand this spot or something and just to so that way i have some continuity there but i think this is just big enough for that right here uh, so that's why i'm gonna put it on so i don't think people usually put a anode on on uh, and you see right here it says al al right down the bottom that stands for aluminum what is this for mercury that the symbol right there is a, is a mercury brand I didn't realize, I didn't realize I bought one a mercury brand uh, but anyways uh, yeah most I don't think most people put on an anode because the, the thing is again you know the trailer only sees salt water for like I don't know maybe five minutes or so five ten maybe fifteen minutes at the most at a time so it might not really matter too much uh, but you know something is better than nothing I think uh, and, and, it, and it a little bit helps to uh, to prolong the life of the trailer uh you know this thing is only uh i think this thing was about, about 10 bucks so the, you know that's cheap uh cheap insurance if you will to help prolong the life of the trailer uh so so yes yeah, so i'm gonna put that on so right now i have the lights on See the lights on in the car uh lights on here lights on the on this side as well okay so the lights are on but these lights are not on. So these lights need to be on too. So I think uh, the, the grounding spot I, that I use, that spot has the, uh, you know, obviously it's, it has paint there, but I was thinking that the screw, cause the screw goes into the metal. I was thinking that there should be continuity between the, the, the screw and the frame and uh, the grounding spot, but it looks like there isn't. So I'm, what I'm gonna do is I have to open this back up. And I'm gonna splice the ground, ground wire into the ground wire that I ran Know, that I ran down here up up to the uh, to the front right here into basically these wires right here the ground wire so so I know those ground wires are working but these ones are not so uh, yeah so I'm gonna have to uh, do that it's kind of a bummer more work than I want to do so I just realized and I should have <laughs> realized this sooner but I didn't wasn't thinking about it the ground that's connected here is not connected to here because this is painted right and this is where the connection is so it's paint on paint there's no there's no, con no continuity so i do have to tap it in so i was looking at it, I was like why is it not getting continuity it doesn't make sense because you know this is this pierces the, the paint so it, it's touching the metal here uh but i totally forgot that this is you know this is not one piece it's, it's, it's separate pieces and uh and to back it up you know i tried my uh ohm meter here the resistance or even I, I can even do continuity testing right here right, if I do the continuity testing so if I do continuity testing if you hear the beep right so uh, let's see if I, we can hit the beep here and so we're gonna set this up without dropping the phone again um, actually let me set it up from this side right there Let's do that continuity test. So again, touch, right? You hear a beep and you see the numbers. So I'm touch here and I'm touching the back of my, uh... so now I'm touching both sides, both screws, nothing. Use the ohm. It should pretty much be pretty low, low resistance, right? Here and the back screw, nothing. So, there you go, no continuity. Okay, so there we go. Here's the ground wire, the white wire. So this way here's also my ground wire that runs from the tail, tail light all the way up through here all the way to these three right here. So there's my ground and I should be done. I tested it, I actually tested it already and it works. So this is not a turn signal. This is just a, a regular light, uh, you know, like a tail light, that's it. So I'm done with the wiring. You just need to button everything up and I'm, and I'm done.
Okay, so I think everything is pretty much uh, on. Got the spare tire on. I mounted it I mounted, uh, on the bottom instead of the top because I think uh, uh, the boat, because you know, it, when you mount on top, it's like, it's, uh, it's going to be like up right here. So it might hit the boat. I mean, I haven't put the boat on yet, so I'm, I don't know. Uh, but it's, it's possible that it hits the uh, the center bottom of the boat. What is it called? The uh, the keel. So, uh, so bottom mount. Uh, I got my uh, jack. No, it's a marine jack. Testing this, this jack is like way heavy duty compared to this trailer. <laughs> this jack right here could hold it. Uh, it's supposed to be able to say it says it holds it holds a thousand pounds tongue weight, or well, basically a thousand pounds on it. And this whole trailer, this whole trailer is only rated for um, for uh, six hundred and something pounds. Let's see what we can six hundred and six hundred and ten pounds. So it's rated for six hundred and ten pounds plus uh, the weight of the trailer, which is like a little bit over two hundred pounds. So basically, eight hundred and let's say eight hundred fifty pounds. So, so that. And this is the smallest one that Kurt makes. I like Kurt, so I always buy Kurt brand uh, hitch stuff. So, you know, Kurt brand, that's that's my favorite brand of, of all the different brands. So this is a 200 pound, or excuse me, 2,000 pound uh, trailer weight, 200 pound tongue weight. Same thing with the uh, hitch here, but I'm normally, because cause this, this trailer and the boat's going to be only, uh, see the boat fully loaded. It's probably about 200 pounds with all my stuff. Or maybe more, maybe 250 pounds with the with the outboard. Because the outboard is about 40 pounds. Uh, that's, well, actually, the boat the, the boat empty is 145 pounds, I think. 145 plus all the stuff with it. Uh, uh, let's see, 145, that means it's 65, no, 55 pounds of stuff. Um, actually, I don't think I, in, all my stuff is 55 pounds. I think the... Um, the outboard, the outboard is uh, 40 pounds, no, 45 pounds. So basically the, the whole boat with the outboard and everything is probably a, a little bit over 200 pounds. Let's say uh, 220 pounds. 220 pounds, the, the bed trailer was, what was it? It was uh, 210, but that's, that's, that's without the spare tire. That's without the, uh, the, um, the jack. Let's see, what else am I putting on here? Okay, what else I'm putting on here? Oh, the, the, the winch, I haven't put the, the winch on yet. But I need to put. I need to throw the boat on here first before I put the winch on because I have no idea, you know, where to place it. I'm, I'm just guesstimating, you know. Um, so I think uh, so. That's what two. Let's say two twenty. This one is uh, with the spare tire, the jack, all the stuff. This thing is two hundred. Bare trailer is two ten. So let's say with all the trailer stuff, let's say three hundred pounds. Complete everything for the trailer. Three hundred pounds. Um, my boat, you know, say 220, three, uh, so that's 500, you know, 525, let's say 550, make it say 550, uh, still within, well within the, uh, low limit here, or not, not the low limit, actually it's way below the low limit, the low limit is 610 pounds, the total trailer and boat weight will, will be about five, under 550, uh, guaranteed under 550, so, so tongue weight. It's supposed to be about ten percent of the, the the whole trailer weight, so ten percent of five fifty or five hundred basically it's about fifty pounds. So I'm gonna aim. I'm gonna aim for. Um, I'm gonna aim for at least fifty pounds. So I'm gonna aim for between ten percent to fifteen uh, percent. Uh, so ten percent is is uh, at least fifty pounds. Fifteen percent is what fifty. It's like seventy five pounds or something. Like that. So maybe I might aim for like sixty pounds or so, sixty ish pounds, at the where the ball is. And it should be perfect. So we're now looking at the. So I bought the highest one, the the five inch rise right here. Five inch rise on the um, on the uh, the uh, um, the the ball hitch uh, right there. And normally, it's usually most of the time it's, it's a drop because you know because the trucks trucks are taller, but this is a car, so that's why it needs to rise. So that's the highest rise that Kurt makes that I could see. Maybe some other brand they might have higher, but I, you know, I didn't really look. Uh, and and uh, you know, obviously it's, it's connected to the trailer and everything. If you look here, if 
on the back. It shows it that the front is a little bit high. Right? Shows that the front's a little slight high. Well, actually, from this view here, it's almost perfect. So from this view, it's almost perfect, but it's actually not. Uh, and the reason for why it's not is because the car itself is actually not parked. The car is actually not parked on a level. So the concrete down here is level, but the asphalt is actually downward sloping. So since the front end is, the, the, the rear tire is sort of on the concrete, but the front tire is down, uh, downward slope. So that basically means that the, because of that, that means the rear end is actually kind of lifted up. You sort of see that right here till you actually see the, uh, right here, uh, you see that it's kind of like coming, uh, it's the, the rear end of this is actually higher than the front end. So I think once once I level out the car, or you know park park at a level spot with the trailer level and everything, uh, this thing will definitely uh, the bubble here. The bubble here will definitely show that uh, that the front end is going to be a little bit lower than the than the rear rear end is, and it's not by much. I don't think. I think it's probably an inch, maybe two inch at the very most. Uh, so and that's fine. You know, I'm I'm not putting that much weight on this thing, so I have to be mind mindful of that. So I need to level it out. And see where my height is, then I weigh and I weigh weigh the the front end here, and you get a bathroom scale and weigh it, and and I have to weigh it at that that angle basically at the same height, because uh, you can't weigh it when it's leveled out if if it's if you're actually towing, and the uh and your spot is actually not leveled if it's lower if it's lower that means it's more weight towards the front so you have to be mindful of that. Um, well yeah so I'm almost done. I see the toss the boat on here and. Uh, and adjust my uh, uh i don't know what these things are called adjust the, the the that carpet support right here and adjust this the uh the part for the winch and i need to put the winch on there too i, I have no idea again i have no idea where where i, I need to mount it because because i don't have the boat on here yet um let's see so i torqued the wheel i uh set it at at uh 75 foot pounds i was gonna put 80 but uh i decided to use 70 instead so this lug pattern is a full bolt, obviously, but the, the distance from here to here is 100 millimeters. So that's that's uh, that's basically the standard size for like compact cars, uh, you know, subcompact cars and stuff like uh, like the the older uh, Honda Civic. The current Honda Civic, I think it's five, it's five lug. But the older older Honda Civic is like from 20 years ago, you know, from the 90s and such. They use uh, they use this pattern here, really. uh, and and on those on the Hondas the torque spec is 80 foot pounds so uh, so here I mean everything here is steel the rim is steel everything is steel so it, sh it should be pretty strong so I just decided to use uh, 75 slightly less you know because this all this stuff is Chinese uh, you know Chinese steel I don't necessarily trust it to be as strong uh, so I use 75 I could probably even get away with using 70 as well because from the factory when I started tightening it from the factory it was only like at I think it was only at a, you know, out of the box, this thing out of the box, it was only at the, it felt like when I first started turning, it felt like it was about 35 foot pounds or so, That's and that's way too low. Uh, if you ride it like, you know, you start driving like that without torquing this thing down first, uh, you, you will lose your lug nuts. The lug nuts will, will undone, uh, get undone. So, uh, yeah, 75, maybe I might bring it down to 70. Um, but anyways. Uh, these tires are supposed to be uh, pumped up to 60 psi. I'm gonna use 50, uh, and the reason for that is because you know I'm, the trailer is so light and the, and the load I have is so light that uh, if you pump it up to that full 60 psi, that they say it's gonna be a very bouncy ride. Um, so I'm gonna leave it at 50, and that, sh that should be okay. That should be safe. Still, you know, that's still very high. Um, yeah, so basically, I'm just I'm done. I just need to throw the boat on here and and make the adjustment with the uh, the winch and, and the height of the uh, the winch holder right here and the angle of the uh, the support and all that stuff. And actually, I'm I'm not even sure if the width apart is is too wide or not. I have a set at the widest part because the Portland Pudgy is it's you know it's a pretty wide little little uh, little boat. Uh, 